Okay, that's us coming on to the uh, the number seven highway here, which runs from here up to Bangkok, uh, past the Subhanabhum Airport. Um, we're very lucky actually. This, it only takes us about two minutes to get to this point from our house. Please take the card. Um, you get a card and then you. you travel up and then you go for whatever exit you wish and depending which exit you go off then it depends how much you've got to pay. From Pattaya here where we came on at the Nong Pru Junction up to uh, Savanapum uh, Airport where we come off the highway just before the, the airport then it costs us 105 bats which in uh, UK money is about two pounds fifty, or about four dollars, and it's a distance on the tollway of about, mm, I would say, about eighty kilometres. So, not too bad, really. Today, my wife is doing the driving as she always does. She's a very, very good driver, and uh, I'm very fortunate because I've, I've really lost a lot of interest in driving here. Um, and my wife seems to enjoy the driving, even though it can be a bit uh, hectic at times and the unexpected can happen at any moment here. They, they still haven't managed to learn the rules of the road and uh, driving is still a bit wild here in uh, Thailand. So, for instance, on the motorway, they can use whatever lane they like for overtaking. It's not the same as normal in Europe or other countries where they, they have your fast lanes and your slow lanes, etc. So anyway, that's us now on the um, on the main highway, heading up towards the airport. And you're probably wondering what this is all about, and I'll tell you about that very shortly. Okay, this is one of the uh, rest areas on the motorway. We've just passed through the um, the toll barrier and we've not got long to go to the airport now so just a few minutes. Um, we've been traveling nearly an hour now and we're maybe about 10 minutes away from the from the airport so it doesn't take too long. Um, there is a major service station on the motorway. It's a about 20 miles back there, um, before the toll gates, of course. And this is an additional rest area that's been open for about a, a, a year or so, I think. It's not been open that long. It's not been as long as the motorway's been here. But it's handy. Um, people stop here just for a, to visit the restrooms. There's no, there's no other facilities here except for the restrooms. I don't think so anyway. So. Here she comes, my wonderful wife, who takes very good care of me now. Okay? Very good. Feel better. Good. So, the next stop is the airport, huh? Yep. Now, coming from this direction, um, when we arrive at the airport, there's a, the first entrance of the motorway to the airport is the cargo, the cargo entrance to the airport, and that's the, in this particular occasion, that's the entrance we want this time. Normally we'd go past that, and just a, a couple of hundred yards past that, there's a passenger terminal entrance. Um, I would imagine inside somewhere there's a link between the, the, the two terminals, but uh, they might, they've sent us a map and we go off in the the, um, the cargo 
the cargo entrance and then we head for the customs clearance yard which has all the x-rays blah 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 and all the offices so that'll be interesting um, how to get there so we'll update it once we get so, to the airport this mission that I'm on today I think maybe I should start by maybe explaining a little bit of my background and how I ended up here in Thailand um, I come from an engineering background and I, which I was trained in the Royal Navy. I spent 25 years in the Royal Navy, uh, serving on various ships all over the world. And when I retired from there, I went to work for a Norwegian shipbuilding firm. And then I went into, from there into the oil industry, uh, mainly project engineering and working in various countries again, and uh, from Africa, from to Europe, etc., to UK, of course, and North Sea. So that, that's the sort of background I've got. And uh, one of the uh, jobs I got, which I was very, very lucky, probably the best job I've ever had, actually, was um, in the 90s, I came here to work in Thailand. While all the refineries were being built down in uh, uh, Rayong, Maptaput area, uh, I was involved in all that and uh, that was a super job right up to the uh, the Asian economy collapse 97, 98 and at uh, that time I, went, I moved back to uh, working in Europe um, uh, and other countries again um, so that's, that, 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 that's my job history and that's when I fell in love with Thailand when I came here to work several years I worked here. I learned to speak a, a bit of Thai, even learned to write, read and write a bit of Thai too. Um, a lot of that's forgotten, but the, 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 the talking Thai's returned quite well. Um, myself and my wife here, we talk what we call Thailish, which is half Thai and half English. Um, my daughter, when she, before she went to school, she was probably more proficient in English than she was in Thai. But since she's been to school, then her Thai's taken over and she's very strong on her Thai now. And is trying to maintain her interest in the English. So, this life that I've led um, has been a good life and I've probably, uh, over the years, abused my body no, no end by overindulging in alcohol, food and potatoes and blah 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 all these things that, that in excess are not too good for you and it took its consequences um, I developed diabetes uh, type 2 um, it, which also led to some liver complaints etc and uh, so one or two other uh, unfortunate um, unfortunate parts of having these problems. I also caught uh, uh, malaria here which is it was another problem which ne has nearly killed me on about three occasions now I think but uh, I was attending um, hospital and I've been on medication for for many years now actually various medication including things like um, blood pressure and uh, anti-stroke medication etc so when I decided to retire uh, which would be about six years ago now um, I kept my I, as I was working as a project engineer I was I was working as a contractor so I had my own limited company and I kept that going with the uh, possibility that one day then I, I might go back to work even though I officially retired about six years ago I always thought well maybe another job or to come up that I might be interested in but that hasn't actually materialized so um, I, I closed that company down this year it's in the process of getting closed now actually the the problem with uh, living here in Thailand is uh, one of the big problems is medication and uh, medical facilities um, normal problems, dentistry, etc. is all very manageable, but if you have a major problem, if you have a heart attack or a stroke or something like this, 
the bill can go, can be extremely high. And I have known a couple of instances, I've had a couple of good friends that have been struck here with problems. One had a heart attack uh, while he was driving. Fortunately, the car was stopped at that time, but he actually, they reckon he was dead for about five minutes before they revived him. And uh, then he suffered, he, he, as a result of that, he suffered major brain surgery, uh, brain, brain damage, sorry. And uh, the, the cost to get him back on an even keel here in Thailand was astronomical and his family in the UK had to help out and all together I would say it cost about just the, the few weeks that he was under medication here cost about £80,000 so that gives you an idea of what the uh, cost is it was a similar cost to another friend of mine who came here and he uh, he developed uh, uh, this H1N1 virus and uh, he nearly died as well from that and he was in uh, intensive care in a very expensive hospital in Pattaya for about 11 days and then he, he was unfit to fly so he had to go into a, a nursing home here for about two months and um, once again his bill was something close to £80,000. It was a, a lot, a lot of money so it's always a worrying factor. And when you get to my sort of age, like I'm 71 now, um, and there's quite a few guys of similar ages here, insurance, medical insurance, although desirable, is uh, extremely expensive and out of the range of most of us, actually. Um, you're talking about maybe £2,000. I'm talking UK money here now. I'm talking about maybe getting up towards £2,000 a month for my age to get medically insured here, which is, which to me is uh, not a possibility anyway. But that didn't matter too much. Obviously, I could never cater for the emergencies. Um, but I did maintain my resident status in the UK. I still have property in the UK. And I, before COVID came along, I used to um, visit UK regularly, maybe three or four times a year. and. During those visits, I would visit my doctor and uh, go for the, with my normal health checks through the, 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 the um, I was a member of the Bupa thing, and I'd go and get my health checks and I'd get medication, etc. And I'd pick that up like, at least two or three times a year. And that kept my medication going. Um, and in actual fact, I was lucky that I'd actually managed to build up about uh, 10 or 11 months of a surplus medication so I knew if something went wrong that I was okay for that period of time. Well of course Covid's come along hasn't it and that's been a problem for me for sure. It's been a problem for most uh, expats here in Thailand. We're um, sitting here very comfortably. Uh, we, could, we could go back to the UK but we probably at one stage we would have gone through quarantine back in the UK but I think that's been lifted now for people coming from Thailand but the big problem is I live here now with my family and if I went back to the UK uh, and I wanted to come back to Thailand at short notice which I would do without a shadow of a doubt I'd want to come back very quickly as quick as I could then the rigmarole getting back into Thailand now is horrendous you've got to have special insurances you've got to get special permission to fly when you get here you've got to go into a uh, an approved quarantine status in a, some special hotels that are around about which is again another very expensive uh, operation and kind of limit, limits the possibility of going back to the UK so we're sitting here most of us are sitting here waiting for better times and thankfully with the announcements of the visas that set out with the visas with the various vaccines now coming online, the first one uh, starting in the UK today actually, today's the 3rd of December, um, the story's all good and the, the future's looking a bit brighter, I hope, anyway. I don't know when we'll be able to move up to uh, uh, travelling back and forward again to the UK, etc. with relative ease, but it's going to be the middle of next year, at the earliest for sure, maybe even a bit longer. 
and really before safety you're safe to travel anywhere the majority of the world has got to be vaccinated and that includes the people here in Thailand because if they're going to let foreigners in with the possibility of um, having the, the dread of COVID-19 then they want to make sure their own population is, is as protected as possible against th th this uh, possibility so even here in Thailand the, the, the priority to get vaccines is, is very high so my problem now is that the, my backlog of medication that I had from the UK is now depleted and I've only got a, a few days left of medication now I started doing some internet searches etc where I could buy this uh, medication here in Thailand and I got a, I got a, a reference to a medical clinic in uh, Bangkok which I went to last week and uh, they don't actually have the medication that I that I'm on but they do have they did have some uh, or they do have some generic options uh, of the medication that I'm on and um, I've actually ordered one month's supply of that just now and the reason I've only ordered one month which is incidentally cost me uh, about a hundred pounds or 130 US dollars for a month's medication um, when I was speaking to the doctor there, a very nice young lady, she, uh, I was telling her about where, how I've been getting my medication in the past. And indeed, since I've been here, since we've been in lockdown, they, they've been sending my medication to my address in the UK to save me going to the hospital, which is fantastic. I've got a big build-up of medication at home. In fact, I've got a, a year's worth of medication at home now. Um, that I can't access. You can't post it. You're not allowed to ship medications to here, uh, medicines, etc., here to Thailand. Um, so I believed, and I'd gone to DCL, the uh, one of the logistics companies, and tried to get it shipped. And they said, as soon as I said it's medication, they said, no, that's not possible. They can't bring it in. So I, I then. A bit downhearted, I thought, okay, then the only option is to, is to carry on purchasing it until such time as I can get back to the UK. However, on this trip last week to Bangkok, uh, and I spoke with his doctor, she told me that it is possible to get your medication in as long as you go through the proper um, channels. And she could write me out a prescription which I could then use for medication to clear customs. Wow, now that was good. I was very happy about that. That was good information. For me. So I told her about the, uh, I questioned this because I told her about my visit to DCL uh, to, to organize them to bring it in. She said, no. She said, no, 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 no. She says the only company she knows of that is efficient at bringing these things in is FedEx. So I contacted FedEx in the UK and immediately have a problem with that. They, yes, they could pick it up, etc., um, and, and bring it here to me in Thailand very quickly, actually. Two days they reckon they could get it here in. But to open an account, you need to have a credit card. How archaic is having a credit card? Okay, I know a lot of the world live on credit cards. Yeah. So that is where I am at the moment. Um, we're on our way up to Savannakulam Airport to uh, not to fly or to anything to do with the flights, but to visit the uh, main FedEx office at the airport, where they, I believe the, the, that is the main office for FedEx there. And the people there have said that they will help us get the, uh, the necessary customs, uh, customs authority to be able to import these medications, which is good. Um, so I had to get, I've got to take my passport and then, they, but un, unfortunately all the forms are in Thai and they've said that they, they will, if I just sign it, they will, they will do all, the, they will complete all the forms for us. Now they give us the option of saying, well, we can collect your passport and your, uh, your details 
from Pattaya and we'll get a messenger to pick it up and bring it to us it's here at the airport or, and then on completion we can send it back to you. She said, but uh, much more efficient is if uh, we actually came to the airport and visited their office this morning. They said they could have it all completed in a, a day. And when we pressed them for how long we would have to stay here, she, she reckoned it would be about two hours they could complete all the process, which is good. So that's what we're on our way to do now, um, get the, the authority to uh, import these, uh, these medication from the customs people. And then we'll see how it goes from now. Um, I've got to arrange, if it, if it all works out, then I have to arrange somebody to, uh, some company to pick up the um, medication in UK and transport it here. Now, I don't know what it's all going to cost, but uh, I will keep, keep you updated on it. It's, uh, but it's, it's got to be worth it, and I, I'm a lot happier if I can stay on the, the medication that I've been on since year year one. So with that, I'll uh, I'll close this video now. And just the normal wishes: stay safe, keep away from this COVID rubbish, and uh, thank you for listening. If you if you you enjoy what I'm saying and you're it's of interest, please give me a like, and if you can subscribe. If you've got any comments, you can leave them. If you've got any questions, you can leave them. I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, bye for now.